This segment is brought to you by Jigmaster Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com and use promo code PNF20 and save 20% off your next jig order today. You're listening to Bass Fishing for Moves on the Paddle and Fin Podcast with your hosts, Ryan Milford and Sean Lambert. Welcome back to Bass Fishing for Noobs on the Paddle and Fin Podcast. I'm Ryan. We got Sean in here. You know, we were out last week. Uh, Brad and Armando filled in. Um, Admirably so. Yeah, sorry we had to put y'all through that, but you'll <laughs> me and Sean are back this week. Uh, and we have Mr. Robert Brown in here. Uh, welcome to the show. Uh, thank you, thank you. Happy to be here, man. I uh, listen to you guys. I watch you guys. It's awesome to actually come on the show. I'll be honest about that. It's uh, awesome. It's awesome. We're well, happy for to pe- have you. Yeah. For people that don't know you, won't you give a little background on who you are and what you do and all that good stuff? Oh, well, um, uh, well, I guess you know my name already, Robert Brown. But I'm uh, I'm active duty Navy. Um, uh, 17 years in, man. I'm submarine fleet. I'm a sonar tech, married. I got four kids, a lot of youngins. Uh, and, you know, I love bass fishing, originally from uh, Florida. Um, pretty much raised in the North Florida, Southern Georgia area. Um, so uh, that's where I cut my teeth bass fishing. Um, and, you know, um, joined the military back in 2003. So, like, uh, for I had to put down the bass rod for a long time. Because I was going out to sea and all that good stuff. And then I went to shore duty and picked it back up. <laughs> and then I heard about these uh, fishing kayaks. And uh, right I, found, I found a fishing kayak. My first one was a Malibu Stealth 12. And that was uh, back in 2012, 2013. Fell in love with it. Got me out places I couldn't get from shore. <clears throat> went back to sea, so I sold it. And uh, I'm actually in a station in Virginia right now, Norfolk, Virginia. <laughs> So I got orders back to Virginia for shore duty and, you know, shore duty. I got three years on shore. So I was like, let me get back into bass fishing. So I uh, started looking back at kayaks, man. And when I first started kayak fishing was back in 2012-ish. Uh, Wilderness Systems was like the biggest name out there in my mind. That's what it was. It was uh, the, I think the ride had just come out with their air seating and stuff. So I was expecting, you know, to see wilderness systems and uh, Malibu kayaks and ocean kayaks out there. And then I went on uh, Facebook, man. I saw uh, something about Bonafide SS 107. I think that was the first one I saw. I was like, what's a Bonafide? So I started researching it, man. And I was like, wow, this is a pretty dope kayak. I like this. <laughs> So, you know, I uh, went out and I bought me a 127 and um, started going out fishing and uh, started catching fish and posting pictures of me catching fish on Facebook. And I got started getting some people, you know, follow me or talking to people and stuff like that. And I uh, put a message up on the Bonafide Kayaks owners group page and I was like, hey, uh, Luther cyphers the owner you know yeah hey, uh what i gotta do to get on the bona fide page i mean i'm sorry to get on the bona fide team pro staff and i got roasted man i'm talking about <laughs> all, all the all the people out there were roasting me like i got all these things like uh first rule of fight club you don't talk about fight club <laughs> and i just got roasted and luther's a pretty i don't know if you met him or not but he's a pretty down nerve guy so he just he was just like, hey, you know, put an application and, you know, that's the first step. So I put an application. And I kept doing what I was doing and I got like a phone call like three, three weeks to a month later. And now I'm on Team Bonafide and just been running with it ever since, man. Awesome. <clears throat> oh, well, first off, thank you for your service. Uh, thank you for your support, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, it, it kind of intrigued me when you said uh, you do like the... You do like the submarine thing and all that. Mm-hmm. 
Like, does that help with your fishing any? Like, you, you looking out the window of the sump or something, <laughs> like, trying to find fish? <laughs> so, so <laughs> that's funny, man. I'll be honest with you. Uh, it helps with uh, my my read and my fish finder. I, I was I was going to say that, like, it's got to translate somehow. Yeah, I mean, I'm a sonar technician, man, and I've been doing it for 17 years now. So, like, it definitely helps with reading the fish finder. And what's funny about that is, when I bought my first fish finder for my bona fide, I got a hook two five, which I think is a lot of people's like that that area of fish finders. A lot of people starting fish finder when they get one. I got the four. You got the four? Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> like right around there, like everybody always starts out with the four or the five. You know what I mean? And um, I told myself I was like, "Ain't no way that the stuff that I know about sonar translates to uh, the." civilian world fish finders and stuff so like i completely overthought it completely overthought it and i was like struggling with it and then i was just like you know what i'm just gonna apply what i already know to it and then it just it like it was like a light bulb turning on and then the, the roses bloomed and all that good stuff man. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> that's probably it's become one of my strengths for fishing now is uh, reading my fish finder and going off my fish finder well it's cool so does that mean that you do a lot of like offshore fishing? I I do. I actually taught myself to offshore fish last year. Started out last summer, and uh, summer I, I start I started figuring stuff out about it. And then um, once fall and winter came, man, I had like last winter, man, I had a phenomenal winter. I had like a winter like a lot of people have in the spring when they're fishing, you know. Wow. Yeah, I had a dude, I had a great winter, man. I caught probably upwards of fifteen to twenty fish over five pounds. Uh, I, I need this episode. I need. This. <laughs> hey, last last winter, I pretty much skunked the entire winter. Um, November, I caught my then PB smallmouth, and after that, I skunked all of uh, December. Pretty much skunked January, except for like one day, which was in a little creek, and I just so happened to like be able to see them because it was only like two foot of crystal clear water. But yeah, but February, I, I caught a decent fish in the cold. But other than that, I've had a really hard time finding them in the winter time. Like, uh, and the biggest thing for me with finding them was my fish finder, man. Like, uh, I, I've since moved away from Lawrence, uh, don't get me wrong. I think Lawrence is awesome for uh, 2D and 3 i I'm sorry, 2D and a uh, down scan. But when it comes to side scan, I think they're lacking for the working people's budget. Let me, let me go ahead and throw that. For your hook series and your uh, TI, TI2 series, where are you talking about less than a thousand bucks? Yeah, I, I think there are better options out there. I won't say they're lacking. There are better options out there. And now I run a Ray Marine uh, element, and it the, the side scan on it is ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, almost on par with Humminbird, you know, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> I've, I've, I've looked at both. I've borrowed a buddy's boat. who He has a, a Helix 10. And I'm like, it's not as good as this one, but it's almost on par with it. But that was my key to success over the over the winter, man. It was uh, my my fish finder, and uh, and just I put in a lot of time over last summer and then over the winter last winter, just trying to figure it out. Like it was rough. I had a lot of zero days. Don't get me wrong, <laughs> I had a lot of zero days, but it was fun. You know, like when you you finally have that light bulb moment, something turns on and you figure out you started to figure out how to go about breaking down that puzzle. It was just awesome. So was the side scan key for finding those fish in the winter time, or were you able to do it with like just a regular sonar or down imaging or. So, uh, down imaging and the side scan were key. Um, I rarely, well, then I rarely used my 2d sonar. Okay. Uh, I always went off my down scan and my side scan. Uh, now, <laughs> to be honest with you, now I have all three up because I mean it just 
what works for me now is having all three of them up, uh, especially on, you know, being on a kayak, you can't have multiple. I mean, some people have multiple units on their kayaks. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, my wife would not allow that for me. <laughs> <laughs> Nor mine. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so I mean, would you, are you doing more vertical fishing then or, or, or with side scan, I guess not so much. No, I don't, I actually, uh, I, I don't do any vertical fishing. No. Okay. Uh, I'm, that was something I told myself this winter that I was going to work on this fall and winter. I was going to work on is more vertical fishing. Cause I, I absolutely suck with a drop shot. And so I've told myself that's something I'm going to work on this winter is get better with a drop shot. Um, and also uh, a spoon, working a, working a spoon. Those are my two focuses for this winter and fall, is to learn how to use those two techniques. So what's your go-to then? <laughs> well, my go-to, hands down, is a jig. Okay. All right, speaking my language. <laughs> yeah, man. Jig, like, if, if you... Uh, if you talk to anybody who knows me uh, around the KBBT world or uh, the Hampton Roads area, like jig is jig is my jam. And if I can't, if I'm not getting bit, I'm having a tough day. I'll pick up a jig, and that's just something. That's my one technique that I have the utmost confidence in. And what I learned this year, really, what I learned this year is I didn't understand what people said when they talked about having confidence in a, in a lure or a technique. Like, I mean, what do you, what do you have? Like for, before it was like, what do you have? Like, what do you have confidence in? Like, you know how to use it? Sure. I know how to throw a Texas rig. I know how to throw a jerk bait. I know how to throw a shaky head, but what is, what do you mean by actual confidence? And I figured out at least in my mind, what I think actual confidence is, is the ability to throw a lure or a technique for a while, like for a long period of time without a bite, but knowing that you will get bit as long as you keep doing it. Like being able to stick to that crankbait, you know what I'm saying? Like, like in the fall time, you know, people throwing square bills or they're throwing a, you know, medium to deep diving crankbaits, being able to stick to it, even though you haven't had a bite on it in an hour or two hours, like having that confidence in it. And I've, that was something for me that I learned this year. And I was like, that's, that's what they mean when people say having confidence in a technique or a lure. Okay. I still haven't got to that point yet. <laughs> frustrated when I don't catch anything for half an hour, let alone an hour or two. But I, I feel like I've kind of gotten to that point with a couple things, like, especially like earlier this year with, uh, with the wicked willow underspin in a Kitek. You know, I throw it all day long, whether I'm getting bit or not. And because I don't know, I just I knew that it could get bit. Mm -hmm. So and I think that's what that's what they mean when you have confidence in it, man. Like knowing that it will get it will get bit or it can get bit. Like when I throw a uh, honestly, like when I throw a uh, let me think a jerk bait, I'm not. I mean, I'm getting better at jerkbait. I'm trying to develop that confidence. But when I throw a jerkbait, I don't have it in my mind that I will get bit throwing this jerkbait. I see them on my fish finder. I see them suspended. I see them move, moving up and down the water column. I see the bait. They're chasing bait. So jerkbait should work. I'll throw it for like five, ten minutes. I don't get bit. And I'm, you know, tucking mm -hmm. it away and putting it in the, uh, in the holder. And see, that that's me every time... I throw anything that I've never caught a fish on. That's why it's so hard for me to branch out and learn new techniques because I don't, I don't have any confidence in them at all. That's why I stayed away from a crankbait for so long. Now, once I finally did uh, catch a, a fish on a crankbait, you know, that day I ended up catching probably like 10 or 15 fish on a crankbait. Like most of them were like little bitty, but you know, that now that's become here lately one of my favorite techniques to throw. Yeah, absolutely, man. Like, uh, I, it's not my favorite technique, but I love cranking. Um, I actually lost, uh, probably two, three months ago, the biggest fish of my life on a crankbait. Mm. 
on a mm. on a crankbait. Yeah. On What's a, your uh, PB now? Uh, R I P. My kayak PB is a twenty three twenty five. Wow. Ooh. Um, and I That's caught that this year. Caught it this year. What kind of places? You, you, so you're in Virginia now, you said? Yeah, I'm in Virginia. Yes. So what kind of bodies of water do you fish down there? Uh, so here in Virginia, man, we, well, in the area of Virginia that I'm in, we don't have any, really any major lakes. Um, uh, we have Chickahominy Lake, right? That's probably our biggest lake in the area. Uh, but most of the lakes here are probably around... 500 acres or smaller, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, and we don't have the populate, like we have big bass here. We do, don't get me wrong. But we don't have like high numbers of big bass here. You know, we don't have that population of big bass here. Chickahominy Lake does. Every year, every year, every spring after spring, man, you hear of, you know, a 10 caught a chick lake. Uh, uh, mm. 10, 10 and a half or 11 caught in Chick Lake during the spring. I don't catch them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Not in, not in Chickahominy Lake, man. Um, before this, actually before two months ago, it was one of my Achilles heel lakes. I just never caught good fish there. I would catch, uh, you know, schoolies, one and two pounders, but I never caught anything bigger. And I have a buddy who's like a specialist on Chick Lake and he just kept telling me, go out there, put in the time, learn it, put in the time. And I started putting in more time, and I'm starting to starting to figure it out a little bit more. So. Cool. But uh, most of my lakes here, are, like I said, 500 acres or smaller. Um, not really, not really deep. Uh, my media area where my house is, the three lakes that are within like 15 miles are like six feet deep at the most. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And heavily pressured. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. So, so does that relate any to the Florida fishing? Because you said you grew up around there. Because I've always heard Florida is, you know, pretty much shallow. and it, I mean, it is. For the most part, everywhere, growing up, everywhere I fished was probably 10 feet or less. Uh, but it was a little different because it was a lot of pads. It was a lot of grass. And in this area, there's maybe two lakes maybe two to three lakes that have good grass in them, you know, and then uh, the pads here are ridiculous. Oh, no. Have you ever been to a lake where uh, you, see, you see the pads and they're like two and a half to three feet out of the water, like above the water line? I've never been to a lake that had pads, so. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, here, the, like most of the lakes here, the pads are like two to three feet out of the water. How do you throw a frog in that? Right. They're not going to. How gonna do you get paddle through, through that? Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, you could probably get up in the thick of it and, and toss a heavy jig and like, quote unquote, punch it. But I don't, I mean, there's a lot of bugs in those pads and I don't like getting all them bugs on me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but um, is- no, so it doesn't really it doesn't really translate to the Florida fishing uh, to answer your question. Um, and to be honest with you, I, I think I forgot how to fish Florida now because <laughs> I've just been gone so long and you'll never go back and I, try, try I, it out. I go I go home to visit my mom and you know family and stuff. And my brother, I got my brother into bass fishing, so like whenever I go home, I hit him I hit him up and we we'll go. He'll take me to his little ponds or whatnot and. I do all right, you know, but uh, I just I don't I don't I don't know I I've this year is my first year traveling uh, fishing uh, uh, competition you know uh, tournament mm-hmm. and one of the biggest things I've learned I've come I've learned about myself is that I love going to new bodies of water and trying to figure it out. And th- these places, like a lot of places are so different. They're so diverse, man. And it's like, it's crazy. Like when I went to Santee for the, I think it was KBF tournament, like uh, the area that I was fishing was normally gin clear water. But while we were there, it was chocolate milk. Mm. And I was like, 
I did terrible at this tournament, by the way. <laughs> I, finished like 80, I finished like 84th out of like 140 or something like that. But uh, it was just, it was the challenge of it, trying to figure it out. Like, and I hate, I, the worst thing you can have is like to see the fish on your fish finder and not be able to get them to bite. <laughs> And I'm I almost thought, started questioning myself. Is that really fish I'm seeing? That, exactly. they're not, that can't be fish because it looks yeah. like fish, but they're not doing anything. Nothing. That's a floating leaf, right? That's not debris <laughs> in the water, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that happened to me today, actually. I went fishing today, and I went to a new pond. It wasn't a lake. It was a pond. But uh, friends have told me that double digits have come out of this place, and I saw, I saw bait. I saw shad everywhere. I saw uh, bass on the fish finder everywhere i caught one 17 inch fish in about six hours of fishing and i was just like i don't get it i threw everything up underneath the sun <laughs> and i just, I, I just i'm sorry go ahead no i was gonna say i would take that because i i don't remember the last time i caught a 17 inch fish i've had some pretty bad luck as far as size goes here where do you where are you at? lately? I'm in Tennessee. I'm close to Nashville. Really? So do you fish uh Chick Chickamauga? No, I've never been out there. I'm uh I'm like 40 miles south of Nashville. Generally, lake I fish is like Percy Priest, or uh, this this year I fished uh, Duck River quite a bit. I, I know that. Know. I know yeah. That. Um. That actually might have been my last fish over 17 inches. I caught my PB smallmouth, which is like, I think it was 17 and three quarter. Uh, I've never caught a smallie, man. It's a really fish. Oh, really? Never caught a smallie. Oh, huh. dude, they. I've I've caught two decent ones. Like I've I've caught a bunch of smaller ones, but I've caught two decent ones. My first one was back in November. Uh, uh, it was a 17 and a quarter, and then I caught this one, 17 and three quarter. Dude, they fight so good. And, like, these ain't even, like, it's big I don't ones. hear it, I don't hear it. <laughs> like, you, you get into, like, 19, 20 inches, I want, that's what I want. Because I these can't even imagine, are, yeah. These things fight so much. And, like, that, the first one I caught, caught it on a Ned rig on a medium light rod with, like, I think it was, like, eight-pound test. And this thing's got my rod bent over, and, like, I'm having to work it and fight it. There's this dude on a bass boat that's about to come around the corner, uh, and he stopped and was watching me. So I'm like, oh, I can't lose this fish, or you know, he's going to be making fun of me or something. You know, I got to show him those yeah. kayak anglers can, can fish, too. But I, I finally got it in. Yeah. But uh, the other one was a uh, I caught it on that wicked willow with a kayak man out on Duck River, cast it upstream, and I was actually like adjusting my my position or whatever. And I look up and my line's like thirty feet over to the left from where I cast it. So <laughs> Don't I said, "Man, you love that <laughs> hey, hey!" And you know they talk about uh, those river smallmouth, you know, fighting real hard. Man, this dude's running back and forth. And, it's crazy. I loved it. I'm so jealous, man. So jealous. <laughs> uh, funny story about that is, uh, so at the national championship this year, uh, so I, I got down there on the 29th or 30th and started pre-fishing the next day. Uh, and my buddy, uh, fellow uh, sailor who's going down there fishing chief or whatnot, he was coming down later that evening. Right, so I went out pre-fished, and I, I, I slayed him. First day of pre-fishing, I slayed him. I found two or three different patterns, and every fish I caught was 16 to 17 inches. Nice. And I was like, I think if I catch this during the tournament, the first two days, I'll make day three. In this one area, that this one launch that I put in, I caught that. So got off the water, went back to our Airbnb that we rented, and he got down there to like 5 p.m. And uh, he had to go get his license and all that stuff. And he was like, I was like, I know him. He's going to go out and pre-fish. It's 5 p.m. It's going to be dark in like two hours. I know him. He's still going to go out. And he did. And he sends a pick like 30 minutes later. It's like an 18-inch smallie. And this was before I knew that. I didn't, Actually, I didn't know that Gunnersville had, like, Lake Gunnersville had smallmouth in it. So he sent this pick. And I was like, what is that from, like, last year at a tournament or something? He's like, do I just caught this? And I was like, 
Uh, I was so mad. I was, so, <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm going to skip the national championship, and I'm just going to go to the river where you were and just try to catch my first small lake. I don't care. Was, I, I was about to ask if he was on the actual lake or like part of the river system because I haven't heard of smallmouth <laughs> being on the lake, but I, I could assume they're in the river part of it. Uh, he, he was on the river part when he caught it, but this story gets a, a little bit more interesting. So okay. Probably my second to last day of pre-fishing before the actual tournament starts. I'm fishing with another buddy from this area. I took him to the ramp the, the first ramp where I went to where I slayed him and I was showing him around because he was fishing the trail championship and not the national championship. And so we're out on Main Lake. Dude, we're down by the dam at Gunnersville. And it's like 70 foot of water bluff walls. And dude, we're, we're catching, I've never caught fish in 70 foot of water. We're catching fish on this bluff wall, 70 foot of water. I didn't find this pattern. I have to give it up to my buddy, J James W. Quinn. He found this pattern. But we're throwing eighth ounce and three sixteenth ounce weight Texas rigged trick worm in 70 foot of water. <laughs> Going all the way to the bottom? Yes. How long wow. did that take to get down there? <laughs> it's like literally like you cast it to the bluff wall. And you had to get as tight to the bluff wall as you could. You cast it to the bluff wall and you just, you know, you light a cigarette or you wait and you play spades on your phone or something. <laughs> <laughs> 30 minutes really, later. You didn't, you didn't feel the bite. You just, you line watched. You know, you watched if your line jumped or if it started swimming off. And that's how you knew he had a fish. And Travis... We're headed like we're fin almost finished pre fishing. We're headed back towards the ramp. He catches a 15 inch smallmouth like 20 feet from me. And I was just like, You gotta be kidding me. Are you serious? You got a smallie? I didn't. So they are in the lake. I mean, we were at as far south of the lake as you can go by the, by the dam. The smallies are in the lake. Cool. And I was I was very I was happy for him, you know, but I was upset. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to uh, but yeah, I mean that was that was cool. Uh, one of these days I'm gonna get me a smallie. I will. I've only fished okay. for them once, and the day that I went and fished for the smallies, I slayed the large mouth. Not once. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but a, a good day of fishing is a good day of fishing, I guess. I, 100% concur with that, sir. A good day of fishing is a good day of fishing. I won't argue with that. So, do y'all not have many, like, good smallmouth fisheries up there? Or, oh, or do you well, just not here, target them? Or? Here in my area, which is Hampton Roads, we don't have, the lakes here don't have smallmouth. What about rivers? Do y'all have any the, rivers the, around them? The rivers don't have them either. We have to drive wow. about two to three hours to get to any place that has smallies. And I was supposed to go this year to chase some smallies like two and a half hours north above Richmond in the James River. Because the James River has it. Northern James River has smallmouth. But, you know, COVID, Navy said I can't leave the area, so I couldn't go anywhere. But right. eventually I'm going to get me a small. I've, just, I've only fished for them once, and that was like in 2013. Uh, and... But I will get me one. That's a, it's a bucket list fish. I will get it. I caught my first uh, spot this year. Well, this past winter, and well, my, my first spot turned into my first, second, third, and fourth. So I'm like <laughs> four spots on like eight casts. Wow. Now, see, I don't think we have any spot around me. I'm in PA. Uh, and I don't know. Uh, South Central, below uh, like York Lancaster area. Okay, okay. Yeah, I know where it is. Y'all don't have spots there? Not that I know of, but uh, I, I don't know. Maybe I just don't know what I'm doing either. <laughs> where, I was, where I was fishing at, I didn't know that there were spots in there. Okay. Uh, you know, I just I caught this fish. Well, I hooked this fish on a, on a Yozuri jerkbait, and this fish is fighting really hard. I thought I had me like an eight, nine pounder on. Okay. And I get it in the net, and it's like a three pound fish, and I'm like, but well, this don't look like any large mouth I've ever seen. So I took my pictures with it, caught like three or four more, like I said, in those eight casts. And then I got on my Google and I was looking, oh, it's a spot, spotted bass. I could check that off of my uh, bucket list. Actually, and you know what? I lie. I, I did catch a spotted bass in Deep Creek, Maryland. 
Um, at, in Deep Creek Lake, I caught a, a couple small, tiny spotted bass, not big, but yeah, I, I was gonna say I'm. I don't know if we have any big spots around here. I know I've caught like some smaller spots around here, but I didn't even know there were spots till I posted them. This was last year, you know, I caught like five of them one day, and uh, posted them on Facebook, I think, or Instagram, and somebody called out like, "Oh yeah, some uh, spotted bass," and I was like, I thought they were largemouth, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah. I, I finally got to where, you know, I can tell the difference in them. But. I, that's how I was. The only way I could tell the difference is I, I feel their tongue for that rough patch or I see if that uh, the part of their lip goes past their eye. And, you know, and yeah, this, yeah. This actual lake that I caught them in has big spots. Like all all four of those spots are two pounds or bigger. Wow. Yeah, yeah they, they, they can get decent size. Well, I actually, I think, there's got to be some decent ones here in Tennessee because I believe the the state record is like six pounds. Okay. Yeah, our uh, state record, I think, is like four, I think, four pounds. Yeah. And a lot of people think the lake that I caught him in, a lot of people think that that's where the next state record for Virginia is going to come out of. For yeah, spot you, spot you could be the one to catch it. I could <laughs> be. Or you could be about 20 feet away from the person that catches it. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing about that, I haven't caught one in that lake since. Hmm. I haven't caught a spot in there in that lake since. All I've caught is big largemouth in there. I mean, I've had a, dude, I, I'm not to toot my own horn, but I've had a phenomenal year catching big fish this year. And See, I... I haven't. I've, you know, I've outdid myself in numbers this year, mm-hmm. but like I was last year, I caught my PB largemouth, twenty-one inches, and so nice. this year I was wanting to at least break that twenty-inch mark again, and I haven't. Done, I mean, we still got, you know, just under two months left, so I might be able to do some. Winter time's a great time to get that hog, man. I'm telling you, go out. It's cold, but go out there. I, I, the cold don't hold me back. I mean, unless it gets like really cold, but it's just trying to find them. Yeah. Uh, were you finding them like schooled up when you were finding them in the winter? No, not at all. Like, uh, uh, I would find them either on offshore brush piles or uh, shallow, really tight to wood. Or like, I actually I found a lot of them on uh, offshore humps and a really slow dragging a football head jig. Now, when you say hump, like how deep were we talking? We're talking like uh, probably 25 feet of water and the hump comes up to like uh, 10 to 15. Okay. That, that's something that I want to get better with, like fishing offshore a little more, fishing humps and stuff. There's one particular one that I've tried a couple times just because it's it's easy to identify because they it comes up so shallow that especially in the winter time, it's kind of dangerous for boats because they'll bottom out on it. Mm-hmm. And so oh, it they that shallow. Okay. Yeah. Uh well I'd say mostly like in the winter time when they drop the lake down to winter pool. Oh, okay, got you. But so you know, year around there's like a a white pole coming out of the water. So like I I know exactly where it's at. See, I have a hard time. You know, without that, I don't really know. You know, if I see something on my my fish finder, I don't know exactly where that's at. If it's directly below me. Or what, but that having that white pole coming out, I know exactly where it's at. So I've tried to practice on that and I I feel like I've gotten a couple bites there, but nothing's ever like took it. So I get so I'm like <laughs> sonar tech. So like uh when I got my fish find I, I I like actually opened the book and I looked to see how big the cone size was on the mm-hmm. uh on the toner that is transmitting for the fish finder so like i would look to see how big the cone size was so like if i'm looking at 2d or down scan 
I know that I'm looking at, you know, 30 degrees to my right and 30 degrees to my left. So if I'm seeing something, it's got to be like in, you know, this area. Kind of like a nerd when it comes to that stuff because I love sonar. I do. I love my job in the military, in the Navy or submarines. I'm a sonar tech. I love it. It's the greatest thing ever uh, for me. But um, so like when I got it and I actually started applying it, it was like, okay, well, I understand that. But I still work. So one thing I don't, I haven't figured out yet, and I'll be honest about it, is when I see uh, my fish on my side scan, like I see that, hey, I got, I got a couple big fish to my right. I don't think there is a way of figuring it out, but I'm trying to figure out if there is, but which way they're moving. Are they going that way or are they going that way? I haven't figured out how to figure that out yet. So, <clears throat> and um, I suck. I really suck at catching suspended fish. Uh, get it, I've gotten better at it this year, but um, like if I see fish suspended, most of the time I won't even target them, like unless they're like uh, suspended, like very close to the surface or suspended close to the bottom. If they're in that middle water column, I'll just go past them and look for stuff closer to the bottom or closer to the surface. And I yeah. mean, it's worked for me, but if I've ever caught a suspended fish, I didn't know it was suspended. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was pure luck <laughs> I feel like I, I, I might have lucked out a time or two but it, it definitely is tough when they're like that because uh, yeah. yeah a lot of times they're just chilling there not looking to do anything and so you gotta throw the, exactly what they're looking for to get them exactly. to do anything like, they're just they're hanging out or they're, they're uh, roaming just you know I ain't got nothing to do I'll go for a walk right that's pretty much what they're doing. So I don't even like I've the only reason I do that because I spent so much time trying to like I see loaded like I'm in 30 foot of water and I see fish loaded at like uh, 20 foot. They're just, just all over the fish. Line. And I've cast in crank baits, jerk bait, deep diving jerk baits, uh, underspins or uh, swim baits. And I'm not getting anything for like an hour casting at these fish. I, like I see you there and I can get bit. Now I just. I might cast two or three times, and if I don't get bit right away, I'm just uh, I'm looking for something I can get, I can catch. But uh, awesome. that's that's my that's how I go about it, man. Like today in the lake, I saw they were all suspended, and they were big marks, big marks, man. I was like, this this seems like a pretty good lake, but she wasn't good to me today. Yeah, seven, seven hours, I threw everything, plus the kitchen sink and dynamite. <laughs> and I one fish. I'm good. I'll be back. I'll go back. So I'm curious. I kind of want to compare. Um, what's your, you know, you said you're big with throwing a jig. What's your setup for throwing a jig? Like your rod and reel and line and all that. Uh, my, I have two jig rods. One of them's a heavy, uh, heavy action. It is a, uh, what is that rod? It is a, uh, a TFO tackle tackle, tackle for uh, outfitter TFO rod. It's a seven foot four heavy action rod, uh, fast action tip, and I throw it. Uh, it's paired with a uh, Abu Garcia uh, Revo X with a twenty pound floor on it right now, and uh, which I have to downsize because in the winter I downsize my line. I drop from twenty down to about fourteen. Okay. Uh, and then my other one's a seven foot uh, medium heavy G Luma. And that one has a uh, Lose uh, tournament, which is, I think it's called the BB1. Lose BB1 on it. I'm a, I love the Lose reels, but I'm, I'm trying to test other stuff out because I've always just been Lose. So I'm trying to check out some other brands, but I think I'm just going to stick with Lose. <laughs> uh, uh, it's they hold too true for me. So, so what's the difference in the two rods? What do you you okay, have so different purposes for them? I do. So, like, um, if I'm throwing anything heavier than a three eighth ounce three eighth ounce jig, I throw it on my heavy action rod, uh, and that's just and I, I got the heavy action rod longer just because it actually feels 
almost comparable to what my medium heavy feels like because of the extra length on it. But uh, I, if it's like if I'm throwing a half ounce or a three quarter ounce jig, anything bigger than a three eight ounce jig, I throw it on my heavy action rod. Uh, and then anything three eighths and smaller, I throw on my medium heavy rod. And it's 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 just uh, for me, it's it's feel. So like. I don't like for when I'm working my jig to have a lot of tip action. And when you have a shorter rod with a fast action tip, you're going to get more tip movement than with the, with the long, I'm sorry, the opposite way, the longer rod, you're going to get more tip movement than with the yes. shorter rod. So that's why I throw the heavier ones on my longer rod and the lighter ones on my shorter rod. Uh, and it's just, it's for me, it's just come from me, um, going through a bunch of different rods and figuring out how I like to work it, you know? And I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, that might be my issue. Um, my current jig rod, I've got like a 7.3 uh, heavy, and, man, it's very tippy. Like, that thing moves like crazy. Yeah. And it's... Is it, is it an extra fast tip or a fast action tip? I can't remember. Okay. But, like, whenever I got a fish on, like, once it bites, I set the hook and it's on there, like, it feels good and everything. Like, it's great there. But as far as, like, casting and, you know, working it, I just feel like it moves too much it's there. on the, moving a lot, yeah. But, but generally, I'm throwing a 3 8 ounce jig, and it's a heavy rod. So, you know, that might have something to do with it. I've, I, before I bought this rod, I was throwing my jigs on a medium heavy, and I've thought about going back to a medium heavy. I don't know though. So a big like what I've learned this year really was because I tried out a lot of different rods. Is your length and like you can have a heavy action rod that's seven foot, and then a a heavy action rod that's seven foot four, and they feel completely different. All right, so the length comes into play plus the power so like honestly man i would get out there and uh if you got buddies with different powers or different lengths or whatever try them out with your jig right because if you don't like that tip movement you're going to want to find you a jig rod that has a, a stiffer tip but you don't want the tip to be too stiff especially for like i don't you only throw do you go lower than lighter than three eighths ounce not generally okay. i've Maybe every now and then, uh, if mainly if that's the only size I have a certain color in, which I haven't had that issue in a while, because you know I stock up on Jig Masters. Use promo code PNF twenty twenty percent off. <laughs> I, might have, I might have to check out this Jig Masters because I'm always looking for a good. I still, I honestly, as much as I love throwing jigs, it's my favorite thing to do. I haven't found one jig. That I just love, yeah. Like one jig company that I just love. I haven't found it. Well, see, I used to make my own football head jigs. Like I had the whole setup and everything, and you know that was cool. It's really cool to catch a fish on a lure that you made. I can believe. Like, it. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really cool. But you know, once we got Jig Masters on as a sponsor here, I've started pretty much just throwing all Jig Masters, and man. That that the flipping jig, that head design, like it skips really well. And then it's the only jig that I've ever used that you can get with a light wire hook. And a lot a lot of people like like big, thick, beefy hooks on their jigs and stuff. And that's the way I felt about it whenever I first started throwing a jig. But you know, we've talked about it on here before, you know, the uh that's lighter hook that smaller diameter being in a kayak you don't have a whole like as much you don't have the hook set there. power yeah that you would on a bass boat or a bank so it helps it penetrate better and you know i caught my pb on one of those jigs and it was 5.69 pounds and nice and you know had no issue of hooks bending or anything like that like people would are scared is going to happen. So, 
Well, I mean, yeah. if, if you're throwing it on the right gear, you don't have to worry about that. Especially if you have a light wire hook, like you can't you can't throw a light wire hook jig on like twenty pound floor on a heavy action rod, right? That's it's either gonna blow it right <laughs> out of that fish's mouth, or it's going to straighten out your hook, All right? So like when you have that light light wire hook, you're gonna want a lighter line or a smaller diameter line with a rod that has a more parabolic bend in it. You don't want a rod with a lot of backbone. I almost said something else. You don't want a rod with a lot of backbone where you're throwing a light light wire hook because you're just gonna you're gonna rip a hole right in that fish's mouth and it's gonna come free come free. I've done it a lot. <laughs> well I haven't had that issue too much, but I've got like sissy hook sets. So oh. <laughs> yeah, that... I go that much. <laughs> this is our first time uh, speaking with each other and meeting each other. I, if you find me on Facebook, I go live a lot. You'll see my hook set. I don't nah. <laughs> like. I have a lot. Of, like whenever I'm setting a hook and it's a small fish, a lot of times they fly into my lap. <laughs> <laughs> it see it 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 kills me because like I'm a decent sized dude. I'm like six foot two sixty, and you know my hook sets are kind of like that right there. Mm. Okay, and and then you're like, good, yeah. You're, no, like <laughs> seriously, you're good with your heavy action rod. If you're not swinging for the fence, you're good. You can you can still you won't blow it out of that fish's mouth or yeah. uh, straighten the hook out. Yeah. But you you look at like say like Christine Fisher's videos. You know she's this little petite girl, but hey, she reels does. <laughs> she has got the biggest hook set I, I've ever seen. Oh so man! First time I watched her, I was like, "She's gonna throw herself out of this guy." <laughs> like, she actually posted a video not long ago of herself almost throwing her spell kayak. Okay. She was standing. She was standing up, I believe, and went to set the hook. Yeah, like she she has a big hook set. She does. I, she's a cool. Per- I've, I don't know if you met her, but she's really cool. Uh-huh. Like, she's she's cool, man, down there, and she knows fishing. She's awesome. I met her at Seminole Lake Seminole tournament this year and the Hobie tournament. I think it was like February down in Georgia. Now I, I haven't met her. Um, you know, she's living here in Tennessee, I believe now. So, you know, maybe we're on our show. Yeah, we, there you we go. Have, we do. We do. Might She's been on a couple of the other paddle and fin shows, but never ours. Yeah. So, might have to might have to message and be like, "Hey, go check out, go on the show." Her and Silla, we get them both on at the same time. There you go. Well, well, we are uh, getting close to the hour mark. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate you coming on here and talking with us. We we'll definitely need to talk a little more sometime. Absolutely, man. I appreciate y'all having me, dude. Like, yeah. uh, honestly, like, uh, I really appreciate it. It's been fun. It's been a good conversation. Yes, sir. Uh, you want to plug sponsors and uh, and social media and all that stuff? Uh, I'll give a plug to my sponsors. Um, uh, shout out to you know Bonafide for uh you know putting out probably in my i'm sorry in my opinion the best paddle kayak on the market um and be looking for our new kayak coming out here soon Uh oh it might turn some heads oh uh guessing i don't have pedal drive shots to uh (laughs) (laughs) i had to throw it out there Uh, hey you know you never know man you never know what the world you never know what the future holds okay but uh, shout, shouts to Yak Attack, man, uh, making great gear. Um, whew, uh, so Bonafide, Yak Attack, uh, Omega, Omega uh, Enigma, Rod, uh, Monster Bass, um, Titan Tungsten, man. I, I, it's the only tungsten I use now is Titan Tungsten. And I'm not going to go through I, I have... A few, but I'm going to go through all of them. But I'll just say, shout to all my sponsors. I appreciate all of you. I'm very grateful for you bringing me on the team. And um, I'm grateful for the year 2020 that I've had. I've had a great year, man. And uh, my goal has been to improve. And I feel like I've done that this year. And next year, I hope to improve more. I got top 100 at the national championship this year. Next year, I'm trying to get top 20. So uh, That's right. That's right. 
Yeah, it's it's coming, and uh, I appreciate you guys having me on, and I hope to be able to come on again. You know, maybe next time you have me on, I might be nice championship, uh, you know, champion. There you go. Hey, I like the sound of that. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Although uh, they'll probably steal you for a different segment. Uh, there's a, a <laughs> pal and Vid segment that goes over tournament champions and stuff like that. So nah, they'd nah, probably want back, you on I'm that. Coming show. back here. All uh, right, that's, that's right. right. They can't coming back to the new show. Back here. Take that, Jimmy and Dan. <laughs> yeah, take that. <laughs> oh, no. my last shout out will be to the Norfolk uh, KFL team. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard about KFL. Uh, Greg Nosar and KBB team, they started Kayak Fishing League, the Professional Fishing League. Uh, we have a team here in Norfolk. I am the manager and uh, coach. And uh, we will be announcing our team members and our logo and all that stuff here coming up in the next three weeks. And awesome. it's going to be good stuff, man. Uh, you, I'll be coming to a place near you with my team. We'll be knocking off some of your best fishermen. Awesome. Yeah, that well, sounds awesome. When you come down here, we'll uh, hit me up. We'll have to uh, try to get on some smallmouth if you got an extra day. You said that. I'm definitely going to have an extra day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, cool. Uh, did you want to do social media? Uh, I mean, I have a, I have a Facebook, Yak Assassin. I have um, Instagram, Yak Assassin. Uh, exactly how it sounds. Y a k b a s s a s s i n. Yak Assassin. Come holler at me. I put up. I actually started a YouTube channel now. Uh, I'm not that great at editing, but I'm getting better. I'm getting some coaching. But uh, my my thing is all about teaching people what I know. And teach people how to be better at fishing, man. So like, I ain't trying to be famous. I ain't trying to get a lot of followers, man. I'm just trying to help you put more fish in the boat. Grow the sport. That's what we're about to, man. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Well, Rob, thank you again for coming on. Um, this has been the Bass Vision for Noob segment of the Paddle and Fin Podcast. We're bringing you the techniques, the tricks, and the tips to help you rip more lips. Yes, Catch sir. Catch you guys later. Thanks, All right. guys. Later, y'all. Thanks for tuning in to another killer episode on Paddle and Fin. Don't forget to go check out our website at paddle, the letter N, and fin.com. Don't forget to check out the YouTube channel at Paddle and Fin. If you got a question, comment, want to hear from a future guest on a future episode, feel free to email us at paddle, the letter N, and fin at gmail.com. Don't forget to follow us on social media at Paddle and Fin on Facebook and Instagram. Shout out to our show supporters, Angler. The Angler button and app just makes for a better time on the water and creates a virtual logbook for every fishing outing out on the water. Shout out to Rocktown Adventures, located in Northern Illinois, for all your kayaking, camping, and hiking needs. TRC Covers, protect your investment. Catch Products, shout out to Catch Products. Go to catchproducts.com and put the Paddle and Fin logo directly on your catch board. Shout out to Jigmasters Jigs. When in doubt, get the jig out. Go to jigmasters.com, use promo code PNF20 and save 20% on all your jig and tackle needs.